Hello everyone, my name is Thomas Hollihan and welcome to the very first episode of Lighting the Lamp podcast and today I'm joined with Rick Hayward to discuss our mutual passion for hockey. Rick, how are you? Great, Thomas. Thank you for inviting me to be, to be here on your first broadcast. I really love the logo. I love the idea Thank that you, you have. And uh, to be here and discussing hockey is sort of reliving some really neat times for me. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I see some books on the table. Tell us about that. Well, yeah. I, I was going to ask you, who you saw, who, what players do you really admire today? And then I'll tell you about the books. Uh, ooh, that's a tough question. Uh, I really like uh, Cole Caulfield. He plays for Canadians, my favorite team. Uh, but if I had to go outside the Canadians, I'd probably go with someone like Trevor Zegers. You know, he's very uh, talented, I should say. He's uh, very much so. Yeah, yeah, entertaining, I should say. I guess we don't only have a common passion for hockey, but also for the Canadians. Yes. I'm actually, I'll tell you, the, the sweater I'm wearing, the shirt I'm wearing, I got at the Bell Center. Uh, just a few years ago, I took a friend of mine who had was suffering from ALS at the time, and uh, I took him to, a, he wanted to get one more game in at the Bell Center before the time came he wouldn't be able to do it anymore. We are at the Bell Center, and out of nowhere, I got a call from TSN <laughs> saying, uh, I hear that you're with uh, John Hawks, and he was former vice principal at James Miller High School, and I said, yeah, and he said, we'd love to do an interview with him today. Can you arrange to get him into his seat 15 minutes before the game starts? And uh, Sure enough, I got him into a scene, and TSN did a couple of minutes of broadcast with him, talking about his career with the UND Red Devils, and uh, and that was sort of a neat thing. So this sweater, this sweater, not only because it's my job, but because uh, because of the, day, the evening I got it, means a lot to me. And also, it's John Belleville on the back. So Belleville was one of my favorite players, which leads me to these books. Um, when I was a kid, I used to love reading about the players that I admired most, and the one that I really admired at that time when I was probably a little bit younger than you, was Gordie Howe. And so I brought a book in that I got as a kid, actually, about his life. And then the other ones, um, I have a connection with Bobby Orr. Uh, Bobby Orr, actually, when I was 10 years old, I came home from school one day, and he was sitting in my living room, which really, uh, as for a kid who was 10 years old at the time, really was quite something and sort of caught me off guard. And what had happened, and there's a connection to Blackville with this, he had, uh, a, a coach of mine actually had room with Bobby Orr, with the Oshawa Generals, oh, the coach I had that year. And when Bobby, he asked Bobby Orr to come and speak to our banquet, our closing banquet that year. Um, and when he came, of course, Bobby Orr wanted to go salmon fishing, and he wanted to come up here to do it. So uh, he didn't have the equipment, so uh, my former coach, Peter Nevin, called up my dad, who we knew fished, got his fishing gear, and Bobby Orr went out that day, and they got a couple of fish, a couple of salmon, and it came back, and they were just had just brought the equipment back, and were just having a refreshing beer in my living room with my father to thank him for having the equipment. And uh, that's how I connected with, with uh, Bob Yorden. The other book I have is Eddie Shack. Eddie Shack wasn't certainly the star that Gordy Howard, Bob Yorden, or yeah. Jean Belvo, but he was certainly entertaining. And I used to work at the Miramichi Golf Course, and one day, who shows up at the pro shop? Eddie Shack wants to have a round of golf, but insisted on having a caddy. I was the only young lad around at the time, so the pro said, Rick, you go out and caddy for Eddie Shack. And so I did nine holes of golf caddying for Eddie Shack, which was totally entertaining. I laughed almost the whole nine holes because of the antics that he did playing golf. He was just as entertaining play go playing golf as he was playing hockey. So those are the books. I, these are the people I admired when, when I was your age growing up. Yes. So um, uh, tell me, I, I, I'm going to just ask you a question if you don't mind. I, I see on the shirt that you're wearing that yes. you've got St. Andrews Hockey School. Can you tell me, did you go to St. Andrews Hockey School? I went to St. Uh, Andrews Hockey School for uh, two years. I went in 2017, I think, or 16. I went in uh, 2019. Both uh, wonderful experiences. Uh, we always went to the, this is cottage, I forget what it's called now, uh, with my family, stay in Charlottetown. Uh, yeah, I love going to PEI, and I especially love Andrews. Uh, great experience, and I actually did a few camps in uh, Fredericton that weren't the actual, like the the main Andrews Hockey School, but they were just kind of clinics. And yeah, I know it's a great organization. Uh, loved every minute of it. You know, learned some great hockey, and there are a few uh, NHL players that have went to uh, Andrews Hockey School: Sidney Crosby, Nathan McKinnon, uh, Brad Marchand, just all players like from around the. Uh, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick cool. area have all participated, I should say, in uh, Andrews. But no, yeah, I loved it. And uh, 
Great program. Good so, program. and I did. I said St. Andrews Hockey School, and that's my yeah. my age coming through. <laughs> it's yours is Andrews Hockey School. I was thinking in terms of St. Andrews Hockey School, which I went to when I was ten years old, and a story I have from then. Um, and it was actually the same year that I met that Bobby Orr ended up in in my living room. Um, I was sitting around one day. We just finished a two two hour workout, and suddenly this one of the coaches at that time, one of the instructors at the camp, comes through and he says, "Any of you guys play? Uh, any of you guys play golf?" I said, yeah, I play golf. And he said, how would you like to go for nine holes? And I said, yeah, I'll go for nine holes. So I get up, and he, I said, but I, don't have any, I didn't bring my golf equipment with me. And he said, no, that's all right. I'll look after it. So as I got up, another lad my age, he says, I also play. He said, come along. The three of us will go have a round of golf. So we go have a round of golf, and, and this person that was the instructor I, at the time, I didn't really know him very well because he was only coaching at that time, I believe, in the AHL. So he was not a name who was familiar to me, but it was Scotty Bowman. Oh, yes. So, again, another connection with the Canadians, right? Yes. But the interesting part of that story happened just a few years ago. Um, we played nine holes of golf, never thought of it again. Um, and at the time, I'm teaching, I, before I retired, and I'm uh, president of the uh, New Brunswick Teachers Insurance Board, oh, right, or yes. chair of it. And uh, so we get invited to St. Andrews to go and have a meeting with our counterparts in uh, Newfoundland and Nova Scotia and PEI. So I'm there, and as part of it, we get invited to play nine holes of golf. So away we go out to play nine holes of golf, and I team up. And just as I'm teaming up, one of the lads who was with us says, you know what, last time I played here was in 1963, and I played with Scotty Bowman. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, the last time I played here was 1963 with Scotty Bowman. And we think the two of us, we don't have the scorecard, but we think the two of us were the, the other two lads who were the two people who played with Scotty Bowman. So that was sort of neat that that happened many, many years later that all of a sudden there was a strong connection made. And that's one thing I, and I, I thank you for actually inviting me to part of this interview because it made me reflect upon the connections I've had with hockey and the connections I was able to make over the years because of hockey, which extended way beyond just the rink. Hockey is so much fun in the rink, and like you, I really enjoyed it, but it helped me make connections, which I guess I still have today, and which I still love today, and of course, I love sitting down watching the Canadians play, and, and I, you mentioned Colford. I love watching the Canadians this year, because they're young, and they're fast, and they may not win the uh, Stanley Cup no. this year, <laughs> well, but it's fun to watch them anyway. So. Yeah, I know. They're going to be an exciting team in a few years. Uh, definitely not what I was expecting. They're... Uh, yeah, they finished bottom of the league last year, which was, you know, yeah, sad, I guess. But, uh, yeah, no, they bounced back. They got brand new coaches and uh, staff. But, yeah, it's working out good for and them. It's a fun team to watch. And, and that's the thing about hockey. You may not always win, but uh, regardless, as long as you have fun doing it and uh, the, the joy of the, and the challenge of playing it is there, I think it's something you can do for years. I, I played right up to about... Oh, about seven years ago, but then my knees got a little bit to a point where I thought, no, I better just stick to skating, which I still love doing. But So tell me about your, when did you, how do you think you got your passion for hockey? Where did it come from? Well, well, uh, my grandfather actually, he built a rink in uh, Renews, which is about uh, five, ten minutes away from here. His name is Tom Donovan. Tom I Donovan. remember Tom Donovan very well. Yeah, so I was always put into the rink. Uh, actually, uh, when I was about five or six, I didn't want to play hockey. I didn't. Oh, really? I didn't like to skate. I didn't oh, like to wow. skate. But you yeah, know, mom and dad made me keep at it, and I'm glad that it worked out. Obviously, uh, I've been playing hockey since I was four, so that's about ten. It'll be ten years uh, this winter. Uh, but yeah, no, I love hockey. I always have, except for that little stunt. So yeah, stint for the however many years, yeah. but yeah. Good stuff. No, I always love. I'm glad you stuck with it too. So where do you, how do you, who do you play with right now? Uh, I currently play uh, U15, uh, Renews Hoopers. I'm not double A or I'm not that good, but uh, yeah, no, it's a great team to be part of. We don't always win, but you know, we try and uh, it's like, it's good to be part of a team, not necessarily always winning, but you know, to really find like a relationship with your teammates and your peers. I think uh, you've said something really important there, and that is a relationship with your teammates and peers. I think some of the longest standing friends I've had over my lifetime have been with people I played hockey with. Yeah. My closest friends 
growing up through high school, through university, and beyond. Uh, one of them was the manager of our of our hockey team. We won two provincial championships in, when I was in grade 10 and 11 for J actually what's now James M. Hill High School. Um, and then the, another really close friend was the person I talked about earlier, John Hawks, who unfortunately passed away because of ALS. But uh, he had a really stellar career in university. I found when I got to university, I switched to intramural. I was I always thought I was too small to play hockey, but that's one thing about hockey. I had some great coaches, such as uh, Greg Morris, who used to be the principal of James Hill, and he'd always make me do much more than what I believed I could do, and he always expected more from me than what I thought I could deliver, and because of that, I think he, uh, I was able to have a successful career, especially throughout high school, uh, just because he expected it from me and I wanted to deliver it, and and so I think sometimes the lessons that I learned in the dressing room are the most important lessons I learned in life. I mean, the lessons you learn in your classroom are really important too. But as far as relationships go, and as far as building life skills, I learned an awful lot in the dressing room from the coaches I had. So, and I'm sure you could say the same thing about like what has hockey taught you? Can I ask you? That's maybe a tough question at your young age. But <laughs> uh, yeah, hockey taught me. Uh, wow, this is a. I have, to, I have to think for a minute. Yeah. Hockey taught me, you know, just to be a part of a team and, you know, to work hard, try hard, give 110% every time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. I, and obviously I'm, stick with it because you yeah, mentioned before that you almost thought you might give it up at one point, but you stuck with it yeah, and, and now you're glad you did. Yes, so very glad. That's an important lesson to learn. I, I do want to tell you about one other really important milestone when I, when I was thinking about coming here today. In 1972... That was the year that the Canada Russia series, the famous oh, yes. series, was begun. And I remember the first game, there was a lotto. Actually, you put your, names, your name in for a lotto. And um, lo and behold, I got word that I got a ticket. <laughs> but I was like, how am I going to get there? Like, I don't want to miss this game. And, and uh, so all of a sudden, I get a call from, again, that person I talked about who was the manager of our hockey team when I was in high school. He got a ticket. <sighs> so. That was fine, and then we, but we still didn't have a way there. We're high school students. We don't know how to get there. We really don't want to miss this game. And um, we get a, all of a sudden, um, word gets out on the street that one of the local priests got a ticket. Oh, yes. So we suddenly thought, okay, he got a ticket. So lo and behold, we go up to the rectory where the priest lived. We knock on the door. We actually knew him quite well. He, this priest was a, a father, Donnie Breen, a really nice young priest who had, really was quite young at the time. And he, we knew him as part of the community. Anyway, he invited us to go up with him in the, to the game. And uh, so we got to the Montreal, and he says, we're going to have uh, our first meal at a place that just opened up here in Montreal. But I hear they got really good burgers. That's something called McDonald's. So I had my first McDonald's hamburger that night, and then we went off to the Forum. And I remember Canada scored two really quick goals, and everybody was like, oh, this is going to be nothing. And by the end of the game, it was 7-3, I think, for Russia. And it was just like... We were at a funeral home. It was like, people were like, what happened here? But I'll never forget that experience of being there for their first Canada Russia game. So can I, can I ask you a question? Because uh, having been in Blackville, I'm aware of knuckle puck hockey. Yes. Can I ask you a few questions about knuckle puck? Go ahead. How did you come up? First of all, where did that idea of knuckle puck come from? Uh, yeah, I was watching Mighty Ducks number two in my room. And... Uh, Russ Tyler, the U.S. national team, he stands the fuck up and he gives it a slap shot and he calls it the knuckle fuck and the fuck spins around. And I just thought at that moment that's going to be my name for uh, my company. I always wanted to have a, a t-shirt company, especially based around hockey, but I just thought knuckle fuck hockey, that was a, a good name. And yeah, that's probably one of my most frequently asked questions, I would say. I bet it is. And and where did you come up with the logo for it? The logo? Uh, I actually had a few logos. Okay. Uh, the first one, it was just a, it was just knuckle fuck hockey typed out. Uh, it took me about 10 seconds to make. I'm pretty sure I timed it. Uh, I, I just <laughs> made it on a, a web designer. But yeah, the second logo, I have to think. I've never been asked that how did I come up with the logo uh I kind of based it on other companies uh yeah just a circular design with uh I wanted to have a hockey stick in it to make like so people know that mm -hmm. it is a hockey brand I just put a uh, knuckle fuck at the top and then uh, hockey at the bottom and then uh EST which means established in 2021 on the uh 
Wow. And I hear you've been quite successful with that. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me about that? Like, where do you, how have you sold your merchandise? Uh, Yeah, it started out on uh, my mom's Facebook. Uh, Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, just, she promoted it, and then it really took off from there. Then uh, a few weeks later, I started on uh, my own Facebook page and uh, my own Instagram, and I just uploaded pictures of that, and I... Uh, you could fill out a form, and that's how you uh, you got your stuff. Uh, yeah, when I started out, I made uh, shirts and uh, masks when uh, COVID was kind of at its uh, right. okay. its height. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I yeah. So, do you have any ideas for what you want to do with it in the future? Like, uh, I would really want to have a, a website to really promote okay. it more on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just put it, more stuff on social media. Hopefully that will, you know, boost it. And I would want to collaborate with, you know, hockey players. If they're, cool. if they're wearing it and they share it, then that would boost. And I understand there's a market coming up soon, so maybe I'll be able to buy a knuckle yes. puck hockey. Something really knuckle puck, I probably will at the next uh, sale that you guys have. And I know it's coming up. Can I just ask, I know I'm sort of here because of power play. How, what was the impact that the power play program has had on you with Mr. Hallahan delivering it? Uh, well, power play is what got Knuckle Puck started up. Uh, I actually should say that I've always wanted to have a t-shirt company. I mentioned that earlier. But okay. power play really, like, lit the fire. Uh, yeah, no, it taught me how to, you know, just work. and. Uh, but I find, too, not just work. One of the things, if I can, just an observation I've made, I saw you interact with some students from another school a couple of weeks ago. Yes. Um You've done a really, you do a really good job of talking about uh, how how selling the merchandise has impacted you as a young person, as a student, in life in general. And did you always have that confidence that you seem to project now? Or did that come from having been involved with what you've been doing with your merchandise? No, uh, when I was young, like really young, I was very, very shy. But uh, like my grandfather, I'm like confident and I want to, uh, yeah, just talk. And I don't really have a secret. I just talk. And once you get started, it just flows. And Your yeah. father, your grandfather had a lot of confidence. Yes. And the conversation flowed from him. I remember that very clearly. <laughs> The, the memories I have of your grandfather. I, and speaking of memories, I, 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 I would like to share one other one that I have. That And it's, it seems like, and again, I would not have thought about this unless you invited me here, but um, when I was at university playing intramural hockey at, at Mount Alice, or actually at Dow, I was at Dow taking my VED, we were on a team that had never ever won one of the houses. Was, we had ne- oh, it was, actually, it was the education team, now that I think back about it. They had never ever won an intramural championship before. And... Uh, I was honored to be voted captain of the team, and we actually get into the final game. But the thing I'll never forget about the final game, we did win, but that's not what I remember the most. The thing I remember most is there was a player on our team who loved to watch hockey. He came from Bermuda, and he'd never played hockey. And he, he would come out to all of our practices and watch us. And we asked him if he wanted to be a manager, and he said, no, I just I want to watch so we started to say, well, bring, we got him a pair of skates. So why don't you come and start skating? Well, he started skating, and he picked it up quite quickly. And uh, so after Christmas, when things, we started to get into getting ready to play stuff, like us, we had never won a championship before, and we were just like, we were out there to have fun. Our games, by the way, our games were usually between 12 midnight and 3 in the morning. That's how high up we were on the importance of getting nice time. We took anything that was left. But... Um, in the championship game, he had never scored, and we put him on a regular team. And even though it was a championship game, we just took the, the philosophy of everybody in this team is going to play an equal amount. So with two minutes left, we were, t- we were tied 3-3, and uh, we got out on the ice. It was our turn to go, the line. And, and actually, that was a rule in the intramural league. You, had, you couldn't put on a power play. You had to keep going. So I said to him, I said, as soon as I get the puck, you head over to the far goalpost of the goalie. And just stand there if I get over the blue line. The puck came to me. I skated over the blue line. I looked up, and he was frantically trying to get to, to the goal post. And then I held on to it a little bit longer, saw that he was at the post, fired the puck over. He hit it with a stick, and it went in the net. And he scored the winning goal, and we won the championship. And I'll never forget that. He and his wife, he was married then. 
invite me out for a special supper, be, and he had his puck frame, and we got it for him. And the other thing I, 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 I just want to add is some of my greatest satisfaction has not come from um, ice hockey, but from road hockey. I played with Greg. Greg Malone was a neighbor of mine, and we played road hockey all of our lives in front of his house. Greg played for the Hartford Railers, and he ended up with Pittsburgh. And his son, Ryan, ended up with Pittsburgh. And Brad Malone plays for his, his nephew plays for uh, for uh, Edmonton, the Oilers, and gets up for games with the Oilers. But um, I remember they were putting a light in on the, on the street. He lived on a small street just up from my house. And Envy Powers putting the light in, and we went over to the people putting the light in. We said, what are you doing? And they said, we're putting a, a, a light in for the street. And we said, can you move it up in front of Greg's house because that's where we play floor hockey. Now, you wouldn't be able to do that today. No. But they actually said, oh, yeah, we'll move it up there. It doesn't matter where we put it. So they actually put it right in front of Greg's house so we could keep playing floor hockey. But my greatest satisfaction has come from coaching Special Olympics hockey. Oh. I've, I've coached Special Olympics. I'm not doing it now. I gave it up just before the pandemic. But from 1993 to about three years ago, oh, wow. I coached Special Olympics hockey, and I got so much satisfaction out of that. And just being with those uh, players, is, just being with them was such a thrill. So as you can see, I'm passionate about hockey, and it has affected my life right up until now. Like I, Even coaching up till three years ago Special Olympics, Life, hockey is always an important life, part of my life. So when I came to Blackville School and saw what you were doing and knuckle puck hockey, I was like, ah, oh, there's somebody else with the same passion I have. So to me, I, I'm really honored to be part of this, your first yeah. broadcast. Thank you. Well, thank appreciate you very it. much. I appreciate yeah. being here. Is there anything else that I've missed about your career that you'd like to add? or? I don't think so. Actually, no, I shouldn't say that. I want to tell you a story about Please do. <laughs> yeah. uh, meeting Bobby Hall. That was a surreal experience. Uh, I was sitting on the couch, so I have to think, uh, five years ago. And uh, I was, yeah, just sitting on the couch. And Dad said, uh, my father, I should say, uh, said, do you want to go meet Bobby Hall? And I said, what do you mean? He said he's sitting in Doaktown with uh, Jake Allen and uh, oh, wow. Danny Grant. So uh, I said, sure, and we went up, and it was, uh, there wasn't many people there at all, which was surprising, you know, considering the legend Bobby Hall. Mm -hmm. and, and even Jake Allen and Danny Grant. Yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I went to uh, Bobby Hall, and I talked for uh, about five minutes. <laughs> he had a, a lot of stories. I have to think of what they were now, but he had a... Yeah, plenty of great stories. And uh, Danny Grant, uh, he passed away, I have to think, about yeah, uh, yeah. a few years ago now. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, he won the Calder back in uh, 1969. Or, uh, it was in that era. I can't remember the date, yeah, but I remember Yeah, no, that. no, I don't remember. It was a big news in New Brunswick that year, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, he had plenty of stories. Jake Allen, he plays for Canadians now. Yeah. Uh, he's their starting goaltender, you yeah. could say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, they all had great stories, and... Yeah, no, it was great meeting them. I actually didn't have anything for them to sign, so I just had a hat that, uh, yeah, I just, yeah, one of my old hats, and I just got a Sharpie and got them to sign Good it. For you. Got a picture, and yeah. Oh, I wish I had gotten Bob Yor to sign his rookie card the year I met him. But oh, wow. I don't have it now, but. Wow, uh, that would be. I, I will tell you, there's another player that really impacted me. When I took, I remember I talked about John Hawks going up to taking off the Bell Center. We actually had Peter Nevin, who was the person who roomed with Bobby Orr. He was then a, a scout with the Chicago Blackhawks, arranged for me to take John, John was in a wheelchair then, into the Chicago Blackhawks dressing room. <sighs> so, um, and I just stood back, but the person that really impressed me was Jonathan Taze. John, all the other players had to get onto the bus to get back to get their meal before they came back for the hockey game. The bus driver had to come back to Jonathan Taze and say, Jonathan, we're all waiting for you, we've got to get going. He said, yes, but I need five more minutes with this gentleman right here. He said, I just have a few more stories I want to share with him. I thought that was so important, too. I know how much it meant. Even though John Hawks, my friend, was a diehard Canadians fan like we are, it meant so much for him, to him, that Jonathan Taze took that extra time just to be with him and, uh, and really to thank him for taking time to visit the Chicago Blackhawks dressing room. So I guess uh, I've learned over the course of this discussion that not only do we have common passion for hockey, but we're true blue Canadian yes. fans, both of us, so... And we love the team that's taking shape this year. So. Yeah. So thank you. It's been yes, it's been a no pleasure. Drama. Thank you. Uh, yeah. No, it's been a pleasure having you on. And yeah, that's it. And I want to wish you much success with uh, knuckle puck hockey thank you and very with much. your own hockey career. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.